In my last video, I talked about the structure of orbitals, like s orbitals and p orbitals. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the filling rules which are involved when we're trying to figure out the structure, um, the electronic structure of a particular atom or ion. Now, the first rule when it comes to filling electron, filling filling up um, orbitals is that electrons tend to fill up the lowest energy levels first. So when you're filling up the um, orbitals, they tend to start off, they tend to start off here at the 1s orbital and they start to fill up. So you can imagine if, if we were going to put two electrons in, rather than them going to the, maybe the 4p or the 4d or the 4f, what the electrons will do is they'll fill up here at the 1s so there'd be one electron there and one electron there as you can see opposite spins and the second rule which is involved and this this all before i go on this whole concept of um uh el electrons filling up first the lower any lower energy levels as the, as you progress up there are some exceptions to this rule if you take a look at the d block of elements which is um this blue this blue this section I've highlighted in blue on this periodic table. What happens here is, 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 is a bit strange. After you pass calcium, the energy levels of the 4s orbital here, and if you look at this orbital I've drawn here, 4s, you can see it's slightly below 3d. So um, there's a special case here for most, for, 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 S, for the s block and the p block. There's a special case that the 4s um, orbital is actually has a, it actually has a lower energy level than the 3d orbital, and because of this, it fills first because the orbitals fill up the lower energy levels first. But a weird thing happens when you go to the d block. When you go to the d block, what actually happens is the energy levels of the the energy level of the 4s orbitals, the 4s orbital becomes higher than the energy level of the 3d orbital so the 4s would actually be somewhere here slightly higher than the 3d rather than where it usually is and this happens in the d block but what actually happens in the d block is despite this the 4s orbital still tends to fill up um, before the 3d orbital and this has something to do with the the fact that um the shielding caused by the 3D orbitals. Um, I won't go into that, but that's the case. Like, you can find out more about that like online. Maybe go to something like Chem Guide. Now, so the main the main idea though for the ones that we that um, we we look at our AS level is that um, they fill up um, the the orbit the n electrons fill up the orbitals. Um, uh, for lower energy level first and the 4s is the 4s is before the 3d orbital now the second rule which we take a look at is that the four when let's take a look at this 2p orbital here uh, let's ignore the 2s for now let's say we we're going to put six orbitals in 2p or in fact let's put in three first so one of the rules when it comes to filling up is that electrons tend to Electrons fill in the orbitals singly. So this, this is three different orbitals. What the electrons tend to do is they fill up um, They tend to not fill up them fill them up uh, as quickly as possible. What they tend to do is They tend to one will occupy each one So one will occupy here and then when the second one comes in it will occupy the second one And then when the third one comes in it will occupy the third one rather than them all filling up Maybe the first one second one third one uh, um as soon as they can and so after this process is complete then the um the next three will come in and fill up those spaces now the reason why this happens has got something to do with the the spinning property of the electron they it it, it, it prefers to have um they prefer to be in their own orbitals and um now, if we go on from this this idea, the second thing about this is that when these electrons do fill in these orbitals, they tend to the all three of the first ones that fill in in their in their own orbitals have the same spin. So, as I said, 
usually what happens is when an orbital is filled it had the, you have two with two um electrons here and they have opposite spin and spin is just one of those one of the um quantum properties of the electrons i won't go into too much detail about what that is but when the electrons fill up they usually have a certain kind of spin so one kind of spin and then when that one kind of spin is filled up as you can see these arrows are pointing it in the up direction and this is one of the um, types of spin which your electrons can have so this is just representing that type of spin and so when the other type of electrons with the other spin come in we put in put the other electrons of the opposite spin in which have the which are pointing which are represented by an arrow pointing down and now moving on from this when we going back to the idea that either electrons tend to fill up the lower energy level um the lower energy levels first and move up to fill up the higher energy levels after those ones it also works in the other opposite direction for the most part but there's a uh, there's a couple of tricky exceptions in the d block but we, we don't need to worry about that right now so what happens when it's unloading is that it will begin to unload from the higher energy levels first so the highest energy level will unload then the second highest then they'll keep going down and then the, let's say we have more than two electrons the 1s orbital will be the last to up, um, unload its electrons just to maintain that um, energetic energetically stable state it, it wants to be more stable and when the energy here is as low as possible so they do that by removing the higher energy ones when it's lower um the atoms more stable or the ion that is produced is more stable so that's that's how that part works okay so now if we now go and take a look at the different blocks which exist just for like just so that we can understand how how this works the blocks the the periodic table is split up into blocks we have an s block we have a d block we have a p block and we have an F block and these blocks rep refer to certain properties which um, which these blocks have so the S block um, elements so the elements which we can see in the S block so helium hydrogen lithium and all of these the ones that you can see in the orange squares these ones the the, the last electron um, subshell to be filled are S orbitals uh, or s subshells or s orbitals so here we have the ones that fill up 1s so can you imagine this would be 1s1 and this would be 1s2 so and then we'd carry on here we'd have the 2s um orbitals and we had the 3s orbitals and the 4s 6 um 5s 6s uh 7s and those would be filled in turn and if you look now at the p block elements over here uh the same, similar thing applies so here we'd have the 2p orbitals would be filled so 2p1 2p2 3 4 5 6 and then here we'd have the 3p so we can have, we would have the 2p's here i'll draw that in purple i'll get purple 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 2p's and it would continue so this would be 3p 4p 5p 6p 3p 5p Four, I don't know why I did that. 4p, 5p, 6p. Ooh, money. And then the F block and D block have a sort of similar sort of um, structure, but the D block has a, 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 like strange exceptions. So, anyway, looking back at that, if we imagine, say, um, neon, for example, if we were to draw the structure of neon, neon has 10. Uh, 10 electrons in total so if I rub this out and and draw the structure of neon up on here it would look something like this so we'd have um, the uh, electrons filling up here so this is one electron two electrons um, three electrons four electrons and I just do that and then as I said it fills up one at a time so we'd have this one fill up so that's five electrons six electrons 
seven electrons and then the other part would fill up so um seven electrons no wait one two three four five six seven eight uh, nine electrons and ten electrons and so this would be the electronic configuration of um, neon and if we were to draw it in the the usual subshell notation we'd have the 1s so we'd have 1s squared since there's 2 and 2s squared as well and 2p6 2s squared 2p6 and to um, illustrate the, the the concept of the 4s filling first let's take a look at one of the um, one of the elements which involves that 4s being filled so let's take a look at maybe um, potassium or no um, hmm let's take a look at krypton Krypton, yeah, since Krypton goes all the way past 4s and 3d to um, 4p, which has got 36, 36. So Krypton has 36 electrons, 36 electrons. And I'm going to draw this up on this energy level diagram. So yeah. Um, So we'd start off down here with the first two electrons. So we'd have one electron up and one electron down. And then we'd have the same thing here. And as you can see, it's filling up from the lowest energy levels first. One electron here, one electron here. And then it will carry on like this. So one here, one here. And as you can see, it fills up one at a time, one here. And then it would fill up the down part. So down 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 and so that's one two three that's ten so ten out of thirty six um yeah i'll just put one two three four five no one two three four, two, three, four five so that's ten and um and then we have this three s which fills up so that's got two uh, two electrons so one here and one here and the three p fills up and so you get the idea for this 3p thing, the 3p orbit subshell, it would fill up one at a time. So one orbital, one orbital, one orbital. Then it would start sharing. So it start sharing now, sharing, sharing. And then we move on to the 4s orbital. So I was about to go to the 3d, then I remembered the 4s is at a lower energy level than the 3p. So don't forget that 4s fills up before the 3d fills up. So 4s would be represented um, just two. That would just have two electrons. So one, two. And how many? How many do we have now? So we've got ten here. Uh, we've got eight here, and we've got ten here. So we've got another ten. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We've got now twenty electrons in total. That's so there's 16 left. And so then 3D, we have we come come to the 3D orbital now after the 4S. And this will fill up completely. And this has um 10, a capacity of 10. So through this 3D orbital, we're gonna fill up, get 10 of those 16. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, 16 of those five, 10 of those 16 are gonna be placed in here. And as you can see, this is a lower energy level than 4P, so we're filling it first. And the same sharing rule applies, so it's not going to want to share until all of the orbitals are occupied by at least one electron. So this fills up. And then the other one fills up, so it fills up now in opposite direction. And then, after this, we move on to this higher energy level um, orbital, which is the 4p1. So filling up the 4p1, we've got 1, 2, Three and 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 then we've got the opposite spins now, and this would be it. This would be the structure of Krypton, and as you can see now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and so all thirty-six are now four, four p, and so this well. 
And so this would be the structure of Krypton. And if we were to represent this in the form of the subshell notation, it would look like this. So Krypton, Krypton, KR would be 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p6, 3s squared, 3p6, um, uh, 4s squared. Since the 4s fills up before the 3d, I'll just represent it in this form so that the, so you can see if 4s is filled before 3d. Um, sometimes um, it's okay if you put 3d first, as long as you remember that the 4s still fills um, before the 4, 3d. And then we've got the 3d 10 and the 4p6. As you can see, this is quite a long electron um, subshell notation of um, the element. And so sometimes we actually have this um, little trick which we use to make this much simpler to, to work with. And what we do is we um, use the noble gases and Krypton just happens to be one of those noble gases. And we, uh, we simplify this formula and so we simplify it in the form of the a noble gas in square brackets. And so for this particular one, since Krypton is actually a noble gas, what we can do is simplify it to this. So it would look like this. Kr. And that would be all the notation we required. So looking at this and looking at how long it took me to draw this um, to write this out. You can you can you can you can see how much quicker that is. It's really 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 far, very much faster. And so if we were following on from this this um particular structure, if we were maybe asked asked to um or, or if we're trying to represent the structure of what's an after Krypton strontium SR, if we're trying to represent the structure of strontium, we could actually use this um this this hack and writes kr and all strontium is is kr with two extra orbitals and it's in the 5s um in the 5s subshell so if i was to draw that up where is it kr 4p 5s And so all we need here is 5s squared. I believe, I think um, 5s probably fills up from following on from 4p. Similar to the way the 5s does it, it's a little exception. So that's why it doesn't go straight to 4d. And then it, we have the krypton and then we have the 5s squared there. So yeah, that's how it would work for that particular, um, for that particular element. Yeah. So yeah, I hope this was helpful.